I think one of the coolest things that's going on right now is the ability to take genomics, reading out what the cell is thinking, from bulk tissues to single cells. When we did the Human Genome Project many years ago, we thought we could read out all of the three billion letters of instruction and it would be, it would be really great. But of course, what you really want to know is how are each of those genes turned on and off in every individual cell? Only in the last couple of years has that become possible. You can take a, a tumor, dissociate it into its individual cells, and find out what each of those cells is thinking. Which are the immune cells and what state are they in? How many different flavors of tumor cells are there there? What are the surrounding cells doing? It's like turning on the lights. Before, you, you can only grind up a tumor and look at the whole thing. Same for your eye or your gut or any part of your body. You can only get an average. Now suddenly, the resolution has snapped into place and you can read all the single cells and the conversations between them, the development. It's even cooler than the Human Genome Project, in my opinion. Well, it's really interesting. All of these technologies, whether it's artificial intelligence or synthetic biology, including gene editing, are incredibly powerful things for human welfare and human benefit, but they all, as expected, raise important ethical issues. And you look at what you can do with genome editing, for example, or synthetic biology, and it's fantastic when you think about what could be done to produce crops that can, that can grow in unfavorable circumstances or new kinds of uh, ways to cure human diseases, forms of blindness due to mutations that, that you inherit. But of course, anything can get misused. So the most important things to think about are those things that you can't take back easily. There are cool ideas like gene drive to put genetic changes into mosquitoes that will sweep through a population and might wipe out those mosquitoes in an undesirable area. Well, sounds really good, but of course, once you go messing with ecosystems, you really can't do a product recall. No way to go back and get all those mosquitoes if it's a bad idea. Even more so with what's called germline editing of human beings, changing the DNA of babies. Well, that's going to get passed on to the next generation and the next, and you're not going to send a product recall notice to somebody saying, it turns out it was a really bad idea to have edited your DNA in this way. We advise you don't have children. So it means you better think hard about the sort of changes you make. There was a meeting that the US National Academy of Sciences organized with the British and Chinese counterparts I was on the organizing committee together with several other people, and it, it basically said, before we take steps like that, there both better be a pretty good technical grounding and a broad societal consensus, not just among scientists, but among society, that these are the right kind of steps to take. I think if we impose that rule that we don't take irreversible steps without broad societal consensus and broad technical consensus, well, we'll, we'll be certainly in a better way, uh, I think.